Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zenata Consulting. My name is Tyler Colt, and in this video, we're going to be doing a walkthrough of Zoho Route IQ and how it connects to Zoho CRM. So before we get into the video, I do want to ask if you find this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. That lets us know that we're doing the right thing here for you guys. And if it sparks any questions, feedback, any comments at all, please do drop those down in the comments section. And you very well might be featured in our weekly show, Azaz, uh, where we go through and answer all of your Zoho questions. So without any further ado, let us jump on in to the walkthrough. We're going to break down this walkthrough into two main parts. The first one is going to be the installation of Route IQ. There are a handful of important things to note there as you actually install this application. Uh, then in part two, we're going to show kind of how it works and how to use it from within the CRM. So with that, let's go ahead and jump on into the installation of the plugin. So to actually install Route IQ, we're here in the settings of Zoho CRM, and we're going to jump into the marketplace under all. Um, so this is one of those interesting Zoho integrations. Sometimes they put them in the Zoho tab. Sometimes they do not. So in this case, we are looking for Route IQ. So I'm going to go ahead and search that here, and then we can pull it up uh, to take a look at the installation. So a handful of things here with this application, if we look at the Marketplace app, basically what it's going to do is add that tab to the CRM and put everything on the map so that you can see various leads, accounts, deals, really any module uh, in a map view. Then we're going to be able to create either routes or groups of those uh, mapped locations so that we can optimize our team, you know, routing around the various locations. Last but not least, it does, of course, create kind of a master dashboard for all of the route based information. So when you go to install this, you'll go ahead and just click start free trial or buy now. Um, either way is fine. You can also just search for uh, if you go to routeiq.zoho.com. It will also land you on this page where you can install the plugin. So if you want to take the shortcut, uh, that's the fastest way to just jump in and actually get this plugin installed. Now, just because it's installed doesn't mean we're totally done configuring it for the baseline setup. So what we're going to want to do next is jump into our installed plugins. We'll see we have a handful here inside of our demo account. Go into our details here and go into our settings. So first thing we're going to do is select an organization. That's just going to be the one that you've installed this in. Next thing here is we're going to connect it to CRM modules. So if I click integrate a Zoho CRM module, this is where we're going to essentially go through and define which data should come in to route IQ. So for you, it might be leads, it might be deals, it might be multiple modules that you want to pull in. Um, in this case, we're going to start with deals. And now what it's going to do is actually give us a few different options. So we can either pull in the whole module or we can pull in specific views. So pulling in specific views would keep things a little bit cleaner. So maybe we only want to pull in like open deals, recently modified deals, closing this month, you know, et cetera, and pull those in to the system. Now, in this case, we're just going to go in and do whole module. And I'll show you a couple of ways that you'll still be able to use those custom views. Um, once you are in the Route IQ application. Now, a couple things here. When we map fields, we're going to map either the dis or both the display names. So what should each bubble or dot on the map be called? We're also going to map what the address is going to look like. So we can pull it as a structured address, meaning, you know, very specifically street, city, state, zip. We can pull it as an unstructured, which would basically just be one field, right, that captures the entire address. Um, or we can pull it from the address coordinates, which would be a latitude and a longitude. So again, handful of different ways to kind of pull in this information. Um, in our case, we're going to go ahead and do it as a structured address where we can pull from fields directly on the deal. And so we'll go ahead and just map each field. So we're pulling these just directly from fields that we have set up on our deal record. Um, and those are going to allow us to essentially plot any of these deals that we have in the system onto the map. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and click integrate there and that will pull over the deals that we have in the system. So it takes just a moment here for the integration to finalize. So we'll be right back with you once this is done. So that has now been completed and we'll see here that it has added the deals as an integrated module. Um, again, really important to keep in mind that you can always add more, right? So if I wanted to come in here and add my leads or add my accounts or really any other module in the system, um, not a problem at all. We can go ahead and do that. In our case here, we're just going to be working with the deals um, as we go through this video. But I always think it's important to highlight that it's not locked into just one module. Now, the second piece here is really just going to be adding any users that you would like to have access for the uh, Route IQ application. Um, in our case, we're in a demo account here. We just have the one user, so we don't need to really worry about this step. Um, but you can determine one or many different users that we might want to have added to this application and then set them all up here um, within the Route IQ settings. So now that we have completed the back end setup, what we're going to do next is actually jump into the Route IQ application and kind of show how to use it from the front end to you know view the deals on the map and create any routes that you need to to navigate you from one to another. So up here in the top of the screen, up in the modules list, once you've installed Route IQ, it will go ahead and add a web tab that we can use to open up the map. So here we'll see the map and you'll notice there's nothing on it right now. Um, that's because up here in the top left, it's currently trying to show us routes, which are essentially, you know, navigations from point A to point B to point C. Um, to actually show all of the synced records that you have on the map, you'll click on the little drop down here and you'll open up, for example, deals. So in my list here, I have these deals. These are all just, you know, demo records that Zoho has created with some addresses kind of throughout the US. Um, now, what we'll also notice is that up in the top left, we have all these different filters, right, of custom views or standard views that we can use to filter out which deals are actually going to show up on the page. So if I were to look at like, this will probably be empty, but closing next month, well, none of them have a closing date of next month. So it's not going to show any of those. Now, a really common way that this gets used is for showing deals or potentially leads that are in a specific status or stage. And so you might be wondering, well, how exactly would I actually do that? Um, so if I jump into the deals module, We've got various deals in all these different stages. So maybe we want to do the site visits only for deals that are in qualification or needs analysis. So if I wanted to create that type of filter in Route IQ, what I would first do is create it inside of the CRM. So if I create a view and I say needs site visit, some type of you know custom view name, I can say if the stage is qualification or needs analysis, then show them on this list. So we'll notice that, you know, in the Kanban view, that makes it so that we only have deals in these leftmost columns and the rest of them have now been hidden. So what that means on the route IQ side is that once I give this chance to refresh, now I have this new view called needs site visit. And if I select that, we'll see now I have significantly less deals on the page. Um, these views can also be assigned to a particular color code or set of icons just based on however you would like them to look on the Route IQ side. So again, for this example, I'm going to jump back to all deals, but just keep in mind you can get very specific with these filters to be able to show and hide deals on the map um, based on really whatever your criteria are that would mean that it's time to go on site for that particular visit. Now, let's get into the namesake of the app, actually creating a route. So I see I've got these deals over here on the East Coast um, from you know Baltimore to Philadelphia to New York. Um, bit of a brutal commute here, uh, but nonetheless, we are going to soldier on and create a route out of these three properties. So a handful of different ways to do this. We can come in to, in the top left here, this little list of dots and lines, and we can select them out. You'll notice as I like hover over them, they'll kind of bounce on the page to show you which one it is. I don't personally prefer doing it this way most of the time. Most of the time, what's going to be the easiest is to use the lasso tool, which is in the bottom right. 
which will allow us to essentially draw on the map to create a set of properties. Now for these, I can always kind of adjust it after I've done that. So if I see this um, on my list, I might wanna remove one, add an additional one that was outside of the lasso. That's all fair game. For right now, I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna go ahead and create our route. Now, last thing here is deciding essentially where we wanna start and where we wanna finish. What I can do is from this list of deals that I have here, so Rangoni down to Shamel, I can set up which one should be the start. So maybe if we're gonna start up here in New York, I would wanna start at this location. So I can go ahead and select it here. Then what we wanna do is decide where we wanna finish. So in this case, I'm looking at this King deal, it's the furthest south. So that would probably make the most sense as the place that we finish at. So when I add that endpoint, I'll just need to make sure that I've selected the appropriate spot here. And now once you've done that, it'll actually show you on the map kind of the order of operations. So it looks like over here, we actually have a couple deals maybe going at this same location. So it's gonna start and put them in order based on kind of what makes sense. So here, as you'd assume, we don't wanna go from New York down to Philadelphia, then back up to New York. So it's put these as our first three, then we'll head down the coast and then we'll finish up here with the most, uh, you know, southmost location. So now I can go ahead and click create. And that route has now been created. So we'll see here on the map, it actually has the full navigation set up from each of those locations to the others. Um, it'll give us the ability to always add stops or kind of reorganize things if we determine that that's necessary, right? So we're always able to do that here within the route. And then of course we can assign who this route should go to. Now we just have the one um, location or the one user in this account. So it's just gonna be them. Um, but otherwise you're able to select whoever should be relevant for this particular route. Now, last thing to do here, I'll just highlight this. I've done a little bit of reordering on these. Um, it will actually give you the opportunity to optimize it automatically. So go ahead and click that just so you can see it. It's probably just a little bit confused because I have a couple of these at the same location, but we still see that at the end of the day, we're starting up here in New York and we're finishing down here in Baltimore because there's no reason to go back and forth. Now we have that route on the map and we're gonna be able to see it at any time here from the list of routes. And so when I go ahead and select that, it will always show it back here on the map. Now, an important thing to keep in mind, you're gonna have a lot of routes over time and they don't delete themselves when they're done, right? So you'll actually see a list of all historical routes, which you might want for like reporting or audit purposes. But a lot of the times what you're really gonna be doing is looking at like upcoming routes or planned routes in the system right? Just so that you're not seeing like every single thing that has ever been in here. Um, you really don't need that. And so most of the time you're going to be using some type of filtered view here within the routes, just to make sure that we're not kind of creating a bunch of mess on the map when we go ahead and look at it. Now, a few other things here before we wrap up the video that you'll notice within route IQ, you've got a couple other modules that you can take a look at. So tracking is essentially a way to track all of the visits that have been completed in a day. This is actually based on GPS coordinates when you have the mobile app installed on the phone. So you can actually see the real check-ins that have been completed um, and the real visits that have occurred. Then you have the option to look at a diary. The diary is essentially a list of all routes and all of the tracking in one view. So if you want that just complete view of everything that's happened for a particular period or a particular person, you can look at the diary. The report section here is essentially just gonna give you things like heat maps or cluster analysis for deal locations. So we have kind of a lot here over in this New York area. So we're seeing that it's clustered them together. If we look at that as a heat map, right, we'll see that little kind of concentric colors where the red means that there are more volume in that particular location. Those are just kind of some high level quick views. And then lastly, the Explore tab is going to give you the ability to look at things across various modules outside of just the selective views. So right now, again, we only have deals, but you very well could have deals, um, leads, all these different types of records. 
And so being able to see just everything on the map can surely be helpful when we are looking at the distribution of where all we want to go. Outside of that, there are just a handful of little settings here within Route IQ. Of course, we can kind of change the overlay in the background of the map. We can take a look at traffic conditions at the time. So if I overlay the traffic, maybe I want to route it a different way based on that. New York unexpectedly looking brutal here in the middle of the day. Automatic route planning gives us the ability to set up routing based on CRM meetings. This is kind of a cool one. So if you have meetings set up in CRM at certain times of day, this can actually automatically route you to those meetings to make sure that you are making it there on time. Restricted check-in and check-out basically locks in uh, based on, again, that geolocation. So it essentially disables someone from checking in at a location if they are not actually there. Last but not least, again, we've got the user management and Zoho CRM management on the back end here. Um, those are the same settings that I showed you at the beginning, so we're not going to dig into those for now. Um, but just be aware that you've got them when you need them. Alrighty, and that should just about cover it here for the walkthrough here on the browser side of Route IQ. Important to keep in mind, users are oftentimes going to use this on the mobile device. Uh, it'll have all this functionality, so it can actually route them from location to location. It'll allow them to check in at locations and even make updates to those records, which will sync back to CRM. Right, so a common use case here is once I've checked in on this, maybe I move that deal stage so that we don't still see it on the map as something that needs a, um, you know, an insight visit. So important just to make sure that you tie this together back to your CRM workflows based on that check in when it occurs, you know, via the actual user on the mobile app. But that should essentially cover it here for our quick walkthrough of Zoho's Route IQ. Again, hope you found this video useful. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Uh, that lets us know that we're making good videos for you guys. And we'll make sure that YouTube will show you our videos in the future as we continue to make them. Also, be sure to leave any questions, feedback, or video requests down in the comment section below as we do try to read and respond to as many of those as possible on our weekly show, Azaz, where we answer all of your Zoho questions. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you next time.